Good morning, guys. So um, we are talking about healing today from the Ann Spangler um, devotional book that I've been telling you guys about um, videos prior with us coming with this series. Um, and today we're talking about healing. And the verse is John 5, 6. It says, when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? The man was lying on a cheap scraw mat propped up on his arms. He felt lucky to get a spot at the pool where the ill gathered, but not lucky enough to make it into the water as soon as it began to stir. Like many, he was sure the pool's curative powers were activated by a visiting angel who would stir up the water from time to time. Would you like to get well? The rabbi asked, balancing on his heels to look the man in the face. The question startled him. Didn't this teacher realize he had been an invalid for 38 years, almost as long as most healthy men live? Something in the rabbi's tone, however, kept him from giving an angry retort. Instead, he replied, I can't, sir, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Gets there ahead of me. John 5, 7. And we've done some videos and Bible studies on this same passage of scriptures as well. So, you know, there, that should put a stop to the conversation. Instead came the quick command, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Verse 8. The man felt something lift him to his feet. Hardly knowing what he was doing, he bent down to snatch up his mat. To the amazement of all, he simply gave a quizzical look and then began walking. The odd question, would you like to get well, may cause us to wonder whether the invalid had wanted to be healed. Commenting on this passage, Mark Buckingham says sickness can actually steal the place of God. It can become the sick person's center, the touchstone by which he defines himself. Illness is a tyrant with huge territorial ambitions. It is a seductress with large designs. It wants not only the sick person's body, it wants his heart and mind also. Pain, especially when prolonged, can be a vortex that is hard to escape. If you are praying for healing for yourself or others, ask God to restore both body and soul as a sign of his powerful presence and his promised peace. And then the prayer says, Lord, heal those who are suffering from chronic illnesses that threaten to take over their identities. Give them strength and peace, courage and hope. Raise them up and make them whole. So, um, again, the verse is coming from John 5, 6. And I'll just leave it on for a few seconds. Um, you that are familiar with the prayer line for the YouTube channel, we've been coming from this book for like the last two years or so, to a little over two years or so, um, like weekly we when we were doing the prayer line and coming from this book and then we went to monthly and then we did a series on it but we didn't read the entire thing so we're going to be coming from this devotional book for the month of October I've had this book for like the last five and a half years and it has been such a blessing to me so I'm glad that we get to read this so we'll be um like I said in the other videos coming from this book for October and also doing um, like the A through Z. So today our day is um, talking about anointing and we're on the letter A. You guys could check out the other videos that we have talking about some of these same topics. But um, we're going to read from 1 John 2.27, Luke 4.18, James 5.14 and Isaiah 61. So if you want, I'm going to, while I'm switching over to the Bible, you guys can go grab your Bibles or notebooks for you that want to take notes or follow along in your Bible. And first John, I know we have a series on, um, on first John, Luke, James and Isaiah, like fully, but first John two is talking about like in full context, it's continuing on from one. It's talking about like walking in the light, do not love the world, warning against Antichrist. But verse 27 says, I'm going to just read 18 through 27, but the focal point is 27. I just don't want to read it out of context. I'm just re I'll read 27, but I'll start at 18. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. But let's read it in fuller context. So it's warning against Antichrist. So it's 1 John 2, 18 through 27. 
it says dear children this is the last hour and as you have heard that the antichrist is coming even now many antichrists have come this is how we know it is the last hour they went out from us but they did not really belong to us for if they had belonged to us they would have remained with us but their going showed that none of them belonged to us but you have an anointing from the holy one and all of you know the truth I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, even eternal life. I'm writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. And then there's just where we get 27. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. So now let's go to Luke 4.18. Luke 4 fully is talking about the temptation of Jesus. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Um, Jesus drives out an evil spirit and Jesus heals many. Verse 18 is talking about like 14 to 30 is talking about him rejected at Nazareth. But I, I want to read verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news, which we're going to read Isaiah 61 as well. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. I'll read 19 as well. To release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And that's Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. Um, next, we'll read James 4, James 5, 14. In James 5, it's talking about warning to rich oppressors, patience and suffering, the prayer of faith. And verse 14 says, Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. But let's read verse 13 through uh, 16, actually. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. But there's that verse 14. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. It's, um, God honors our faith in him. He honors us. You know, he, he wants us to believe him for everything, have faith in him for any and everything in good times, guys, and bad times. He wants us to, you know, allow his authority to rule and reign in our life. And, you know, he, he, he didn't die on the cross in vain for us. Amen. So healing is a part of our portion. Amen. So let's go to Isaiah 61. And then um, we're going to close and I'll see you guys back on here tomorrow, Lord's will. Another word uh, that I had for you guys yesterday that I forgot to release, which I'm glad Holy Spirit is reminding me to do um, now, is for you all to release what God has in your belly to release, especially you that have answered the call of God on your life. And, you know, he doesn't want you to shrink back. The word in your belly is important. What he has placed on the inside of you for you to birth or give out or encourage someone else is very important. So don't underestimate your value in the eyes of the Lord. Like continue to do and be what he's given you to do. And even if you've never taken the step, you know, 
take the step. You know, a lot of people look at the destination and the arrival, but you can't get there without taking the step. You can't get there without leaving where you are, like the comfort zone, just going on the journey to get where God has for you. So God is with you. And, um, you know, as I've been telling you guys over the years, be instant in season and out of season, you know, continue to do things until your audience of one, which is our Lord and Savior. Amen. So let's read Isaiah 61. I'm going to actually read all of it. Um, it says the year of the Lord's favor. This is one of my favorite um, Bible scriptures. So the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness for, for the prisoners, for the blind, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair or heaviness, right? They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance, so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up in the garden, causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. So you guys be blessed. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.